Okay, so now that we have a SMB share and we've been able to connect to the SMB share, what about management? All right, one of the things that will happen occasionally with Windows file servers is files will get left open or sessions will be left open and we will need to close them down. This happens sometimes if you have a file that can only be opened by one user at a time. So user A opens it and then they, you know, go to lunch, go on vacation, whatever. User B needs access to the file and they can't get to it. Uh, so in that case, you'll end up in a situation sometimes where you have to go in and close down sessions or close down open files. So how do we deal with that? All right, let's start with this. Let's do a get to the right spot. Get sm. Whoops. Get command for the module smb share and I'm going to go ahead and pipe this to more and we're going to see a couple of things here we're going to see close smb open file close smb session so both of those look promising let's do a little bit more let's do a get command for noun smb open file and we have get and close and let's do for the same thing for smb session okay get and close. Now let's take a look at our SMB sessions and how it works. Let me do a get SMB session and that's going to show me all of my active sessions. So it's going to have a session ID, it's going to have a client computer name, a client username, and then the number of open files. Now I'm the only one accessing this system right now because it's on a little isolated uh, environment. But I can see, you can see here where I have a valid session. So if I wanted to get a specific session, we'll do a get help, get SMB session. And you'll see that we can do this by session ID, by client computer name, or by client username. So the easiest way to do it, honestly, is you know, probably going to be by session ID. So let me, let's say I was trying to track down open sessions so I could close them. So I do a get SMB session. It's like, all right, I looked through all of them. I think I find the one that I want. So now I want to make sure and just isolate that one session. So it'd be get SMB session. And then I'd put in the session ID number 292648. Two, two, five, and make sure I get the correct one. And then remember we had the close SMB session. I can pipe that to close SMB session and it will disconnect me. So now I can do a get SMB session and all of my SMB sessions are closed. I've disconnected that particular user. Now, if I do a get SMB mapping, remember I mapped from here. This still says I mapped, but my session is closed. If I go back to F colon, get child item. All right, there's nothing there yet. I'm going to create something here in a minute. But let me do a get SMB session again, and you'll see that the session is reestablished. Um, so, when you disconnect somebody's SMB session, you don't make them, I mean, in the background, they have to log in again, but that all happens in the background. So it doesn't really disrupt them at all. What it does is it breaks their current session, but as soon as they need to reestablish it, there's nothing major that they have to do. It just reestablishes for them immediately, which is kind of cool because it means if somebody is gone, you can break their session and free up all of the files. Now, if they had unsaved work, that's going to be another problem. Okay. If they had unsaved work, that's going to be a problem. Um, but if they didn't and you just needed to break that session, then you can go ahead and close that session so somebody else can use the files. All right, what about dealing with specific files? Well, we can do that too. For that, I'm going to need to create a uh, file here. So I'm going to type notepad test.text. And yes, I'm going to create it. This is a sample file. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this because I just want to do something here real quick. So from the F drive, I'm going to do a get child item and we're going to see I've got test.text. Okay, cool. Now remember, this is supposed to be shared off of my local C drive. We saw that in a previous video. So if I do a get SMB share, 
you're going to see that we're sharing the sample from C colon backslash sample shell. Sample share. So if I do a set location, C colon backslash sample share, get child item, you'll see my test.txt. Let me create a new one. So notepad test1.txt. Yep, create a new file. This is another file. I feel really creative today, can't you tell? And get child item, and now you'll see I have two of them. If I go back to F drive, which is where my uh, mapping was, get child item, I've got two files here now. Okay, so we're seeing that what we're doing locally is showing up uh, on the map chair. So that's exactly the way it should work, showing that everything is working correctly. Now let's notepad test1.txt. And here is our file, and we're going to make a change. All right, now let's say, and this is something that I would have happen not every day, but on a fairly regular basis, probably three or four times a year, I'd have somebody leave a file open or think they closed a file, but it didn't close correctly, and somebody else tried to access a file and they couldn't get to it. So I had to go in and close the open file. Let's go back to our get SMB session. And you can see now administrator has one file open. So if I do a get SMB open files, and actually it's just open file, here is the file information. So I have an open file. This is the file ID, the session that is associated with, the path to it, the share relative path, the client computer name that connected to it, and the client username that connected to it. So if I do a get help on get SMB open file, and see that just like with the sessions, we can get an SMB open file by file name, by session ID, by client computer name. All right, you get the idea. We can try to isolate the open file. And if you remember correctly, we have get command for the module SMB share, pipe it to more, we have close SMB open file. And that's how we can force a file to close. So let's do a get SMB open file. And then we're going to pipe that. And this is not something you would want to do in real life. To close SMB open file. And what that does is that will close all of them. Get SMB open file. I have no open files anymore. And my notepad, I still have it here, but it's no longer holding that SMB open file. So the user still has it loaded in memory. And that's not horrible. Their unsaved work hasn't been lost. They're just going to have to resave. And when they go to save, what will happen is they will have to create a new, let me bring PowerShell back up here. They will have to reopen the file again and save it. But again, all of that happens in the background. So they didn't have an issue. Where you're going to have a problem is if you close an SMB open file for user 1 and they have unsaved work, and user 2 goes in, makes a bunch of changes, and then user 1 goes back and resaves the file, that can create a conflict. We can end up with uh, overwritten data. So when you're managing file servers, this is something you've got to be aware of. If you close files, make sure that you break the session, you disconnect the user, make sure best bet is contact the user first and say, hey, can you close this file so someone else can get into it? If they're saying, hey, it's not open for me, then it may be an issue where a file didn't close correctly and you can go in and manually close it like we just demonstrated using the close SMB open file. Just be aware when you do that, make sure you've double checked everything else because we don't want users to overwrite each other's data. Okay, so there's some uh, techniques and some tips for managing SMB sessions and open files.